we are faced with the population growth and uh, we are faced with the impacts of climate change. But uh, when we, we cooperate together and work together towards conserving and respect the value of water, then maintains the, the peace and security of any region. Water has the potential either to tear us apart as societies, as regions, as countries, or to bring us together. And we're at a pivotal point right now that if we can figure it out, it'll work wonderfully and we can really do some great stuff. And if we can't, with the specter of climate change, we're in pretty serious trouble. First of all, we need very good policies uh, in the countries where we work on water resource management, which is about valuing water, governing water, investing in water. It has to be part of the overall national priority. And as part of that, since more than 60% of water resources globally are shared among countries as international waters, we need a framework of cooperation so that the countries which share river basins, they can really work together. In terms of the funding, it's really at the transboundary level. I think it is the most underfunded level of water governance. And at the same time, with increasing pressure on water from population growth, economic development, but also uh, from climate change, it's a level of governance where we need to increasingly invest. In the Danube River Basin since 2009, the countries have invested 28 billion euros to actually improve the situation on municipal wastewater treatment. And this means in uh, chemical figures that we succeeded to reduce organic pollution from municipal wastewater by 60%. It is also obvious that we still have to do a lot of things. There are remaining and new uh, management issues like emerging chemicals, plastic pollution, biodiversity uh, conservation and also structural alterations of rivers. There are tools that are necessary to basically enhance cooperation over transboundary water management. The first and most important thing is diplomacy and dialogue and education. Uh, education is necessary in order to build up the bottom-up engagement of the society and communities in order to uplift their voices towards the decision makers. First of all, we need much stronger cooperation at various levels. Cooperation between the basins, cooperation between the riparian states, and very importantly, cooperation between key international partners, uh, bilateral donors, as well as the multilateral organizations such as the World Bank and the UN. Secondly, we need scaled up financing because the, the challenge of water scarcity, shared water resources, they go very deep into the development fabric of societies. They affect millions of people and solutions that do not have scale ultimately will not be sustainable. What's most interesting is when you look at most projects that are, are raising standards of living and bringing energy and employment uh, to a country, if you do it right and in collaboration with your neighbors, oftentimes the, the benefits can be shared. And so, for example, a, a hydropower project upstream that has less uh, environmental impact can also be timed to increase the agricultural growing downstream. This is the kind of thing that as we move to develop our water resources, if we're thoughtful about how to do it in a way that brings benefits to the basin as a whole, oftentimes it also builds better relations, uh, better collaboration, and finally, uh, even peace building. <music>